Good afternoon, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat. Coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It is Thursday. Hope you're all having a phenomenal day wherever you are. The Packers not practicing in front of the media, so not too many updates to bring you in that regard. However, uh, we do want to talk to you guys each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here, because that's what we do. We're dedicated. We're devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, before I get going, let me give a shout out to our good friends over at Ticket King. You know the drill. Go to cheeseheadtv.com, look at the schedule, find a game, and get your tickets at Ticket King. Don't use Ticketmaster. Don't use StubHub. Use a company that is based in Wisconsin and has been since the early 90s. They have a spot right across the street from Lambeau Field. Check them out. You can go to Ticket King either through Cheesehead TV's website or our app. Or you can go in the description of this video. There's a link right there. Make sure you utilize Tick King when you want to go see the Green Bay Packers play a game of professional tackle football. Do it, people. The other thing you should do is be quietly confident about Devondre Campbell heading into 2023. It's interesting. Earlier this offseason, I remember uh, Devondre, as he sometimes does, uh, started mixing things up on Twitter a little bit. Not about football. Not about his play on the field. About other subjects. And immediately, these people who exist only to be miserable all the time started pointing out things about his game from their vantage point. And while I will admit there is no way you can look at, say, the first half of the season last year and think that that's up to the standard that he set the previous year when he wasn't all pro, uh, there are a lot of things at work. Uh, now, you can look at missed tackles. You can look at um, maybe missed assignments, although there weren't too many of those uh, to my eyes. Um, and you can look at a lack of production, tackles, things of that nature. But you can also look at the game against Washington and see how he was starting to round the corner and round it into shape and ready for a kick-ass second half of the season when he suffered an injury and missed four games. When he came back, the missed tackles completely disappeared. I think he, I believe he had maybe one or two down the last month of the season. Uh, his game was maybe not right back where it was his all-pro year, but you certainly saw the guy we expected to see coming out of the gate last season. And I'm not trying to make excuses for the, for the guy. He doesn't need me for that. But I am pretty confident that we are going to see a very strong start uh, from a guy who's now going to be in the third year of a system where he absolutely shined his first season in Green Bay. Uh, there's no doubt he will have now lots of banked reps with Quay Walker next to him. Uh, there is little doubt in my mind that he will hit the ground running. And we're going to see, I don't want to say rejuvenated Devondre Campbell, but I think we're going to see a guy who's well, a lot closer to the all-pro we saw in 2021. Um, there's little doubt that Joe Barry plays part in uh, some of the things as far as play, putting him in positions to succeed, as they always like to talk about with coach speak. Um I think play in front of him, improving, should help as well. Hopefully an ascending Devontae Wyatt, more TJ Slayton, less Dean Lowry on the ground in front of him should absolutely help his game. So, again, not making excuses for the guy. There's certainly areas where you would like to see him improve from his performance last season. However, I have full confidence that this guy is going to tear it up. And it's interesting because you get to this point in the offseason, of course, all of the focus is on the young players and the new rookies and things like that. Man, Devontae Campbell's a really good football player. That didn't just disappear. And I'm really excited to see him with a kind of a clean slate, so to speak, and a fresh start again here uh, when we get to training camp and w watch him shine a little bit. And in week one in Chicago, let him lay waste to the Chicago Bears. I can't wait for it. I'm very excited. And I know you all are, are as well. Good to see everybody in the comments section. Hello to every Soders here. Of course, Soders here. What's up, Brandy? How are you doing? Aaron Harper, how you doing, man? Thanks for checking out the stream. Andy, thanks for the super chat. What's your three Packers players, past and present, to make up your most chaotic dinner party? Whoo, what a question. Uh, well, you got to put Crabtree in there, right? Probably Crabtree and then Max McGee and uh, that's a good one. And then Martellus Bennett. That would be a uh, a chaotic dinner party, to say the least. Um, what else we got here, folks? Jennifer, how are you? Thanks for uh, joining the stream. Appreciate it. Michael, how are you doing, man? Hey, Nags, will the Packers sign a veteran quarterback? Lots of s sources keep having us sign Wentz. I'll pass on him. Thoughts? I don't know who your sources are there, dude. Um, I'd be very shocked if they made that kind of move. Uh, never say never. 
Um, I'm not completely dismissing the possibility, but I'd be very surprised. I, I think they'll see what they have first. I think they'll get through the offseason program. Maybe they look at somebody prior to training camp. Um, but I suspect what we see here in the offseason is what they're going to roll into camp with. And as long as there's no injuries, that's probably what they're going to go with. Um, again, I wouldn't completely dismiss the possibility, especially if an injury hits, but um, I'd be surprised. And look, Carson Wentz, he's a, at this point, he is the absolute coach killer. You know, a guy who you can see there, the physical gifts are still there, but man, if, if he has not proven by now that he is just an absolute uh, coach killer in the sense that you get excited about the possibility of, oh, I can fix him, and he can't be fixed. It, that, that glimmer that we saw prior to his uh, big injury a number of years ago, that's all that's ever going to be. And it's sad, man, because he was balling out prior to getting hurt. Uh, but he's had how many stops now along the way trying to kind of rejuvenate his career, and each and every time he kind of reverts to form and poor form at that. So I'm with you. I I want nothing to do with the guy, but I'm not going to completely dismiss the possibility that they give him a call, especially if an injury hits. Chuck it. What's up? Thanks for the super chat. A 59 jersey will be in my possession very soon. Love watching him play. Go pack go. I'm look. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad he's getting love because, like I said, sometimes on social media, like you only hear or see from you know things and missives from a real negative side of the fan base, and I think there are people such as yourself who really appreciate him. And I think he's a really fucking good football player, and he doesn't get really the kind of kind of des- the just des- deserves that he 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 definitely uh, should the plaudits he deserves. Um, you know, you go back and you look at the last three or four games. I, I think he played really damn well. Um, it's not Sports Center highlight stuff, but really, uh, just a really good football player all around. And again, I think you know we get to week one, he's going to be cooking with gas. I'm really excited. Gold Spikes, do you think any team picks up Crosby, or is he done playing football? I think it's always uh, – there's always a chance, right? I think the Packers have kept that door open in case whatever, emergency, you know, rookie gets the yips or isn't very good and what have you. But could another team sign him? I think there's a possibility. I do wonder about, you know, what he's looking for financially. I got to think no one wants to give him big money. And his leg isn't what it was, and everyone knows that. It's all there on tape. But I do think, especially heading into camp, if someone suffers an injury at kicker and needs somebody coming off the street, that could be Mason's you know, time to shine, so to speak. But um, I don't think he's done yet. I know he hasn't filed retirement papers, so he's probably just waiting for the possibility of a fit somewhere down the line this summer. But uh, as of now, uh, I haven't heard much. I know there was somebody uh, in our happy hour, was it earlier this week, saying that they had heard – that he was going to be signing with the team at some point here in the next couple of weeks. But uh, since that's basically just a, you know, I heard it, this thing, secondhand, blah, blah, blah. It's not really a report or anything. I'm not going to share that. But we'll see. We'll see. But I think, you know, teams will definitely be monitoring him. And uh, like I said, he hasn't filed any papers to retire or anything. So he's still a viable option. Uh, what else we got? We got Andrew. What's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. Who do you think becomes team historian when Cliff retires? Oh, that's a really good question. I have no idea. Bob McGinn. No, it won't be Bob McGinn. Um, I don't know, man. That's a really good question, though. I think it's a hard role to fill. And, you know, I know there was Lee Remmel who kind of locked it down for decades, and then now Cliff has taken that mantle. I mean, who, after those two, who's in line? I mean, who would there possibly be? Maybe Tom Oates, he might be in the running. But Tom's more of a Wisconsin guy than a Packers guy. And I'm not discounting years of knowledge from Tom, but, like, it's such a specialized gig, you know? I don't know. That's a tough one. It's a very tough one. I don't really know. McGinn the blogger. (laughs) You guys are great. Uh, Any talk of a Cheesehead TV meetup in Vegas? I'm planning to be out there for the game. We have been asked a lot about it, but there are no plans at this moment. Um, but stay tuned. It could happen. Yeah, that's Like I said, that's one of those games that we have been asked a lot about it. Not just from Cheesehead TV folks, but like friends and family. Like A lot of people will be going to that game. So, yeah, watch this space. We'll see. Nothing official yet, though. Evan, what's up, man? How you doing? 
Uh, <laughs> Will help a lot when Quay isn't kicking himself out of games. That's a fair point, Dave. It's a fair point. Um, although I think the first time Quay did that, I think Devondre was still on the sideline. So, because that's when we got to McDuffie action. So we'll see. I mean, look, I don't think Quay is kicking himself out of any more games, and I do think that tandem can be damn good and really complement each other very, very well. Uh, there's little doubt, man. You look at uh, Campbell's game and coverage. Uh, he's just not just his ability to flip his hips and take you know tight ends down the seam and things of that nature, but, man, just his football intellect and being able to see things and know how things are developing, reading route combinations and things of that nature, the guy does it all. And, again, I just think he's a little underappreciated. Uh, what else we got here, folks? We got Menace. How you doing, man? Thanks for the super chat. See lots of celebrating that Dalvin Cook was released. While well, I'm the exact opposite. Now Matson is running back one, and he worries me a lot more than Cook did. Well, I, you know, I, look, Cook was on his way out, so I, you know, the celebration, whatever you might call it, this was inevitable. I mean, this has been going on for months. This has been headed this way, so it's not really a surprise. That said, I hear you on Matt Matson. He's really good. He's a good all-around back and a powerful dude who will truck some fools. Definitely a dude you want to tackle low because <laughs> you don't want to go high on the kid. Um, yeah, look, the Packers have trouble in general with any running back. So I'm, I'm not you know, worried because, as I always tell you guys, I only worry about my children. But, yeah, it's a challenge. He's a tough hombre. And like I said, the Packers have trouble with anybody. I mean, you could put any running back in the league in that category, and the Packers just I mean, 50-50, I'm, I'm feeling confident that they're going to handle the dude. So, yes, I, I hear you. I don't lose any sleep over it, though. I mean, just you got to play better. Got The run defense has to be better. And that's just against everybody, not just the Vikings. Uh, Prolific94, what's up, man? Can we please, please just use Aaron Jones in the red zone this season? Please. Good Lord, that was a shame he didn't get touches hardly at all last year in there. Couldn't agree more, man. I did a short here on YouTube a number of months ago saying it's time for a return to the Jones zone. That's what I'm calling it, the Jones zone. That's what it should be, especially in goal-to-go situations. He has such a great nose for the end zone, the ability to what they call get skinny, right? And the way, to your point, they just ignored him last year. That was down, downright criminal. Um, you know, what, 40 touchdowns the last two seasons prior, and then last year they were like, eh, we're going to try something else. Why? Like, yeah, no, I'm with you, man. Totally with you on that. Um, what else we got? We got Joe. What's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. Which Packers draft pick this year wins the Aaron Jones Award? The guy who has people asking, why was he, why the heck was he drafted so late? I could be Wicks. Hell, it could be, uh, could be Bose if he can get on the field. I know uh, he hasn't been able to so far this offseason, but at least not when the media has been present. Um, but, yeah, I think Wicks has probably the best opportunity there. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe one of the undrafted kids. Um, we'll see though. But long way to go there. Uh, how many interceptions will Jordan Love get this season? I believe you mean throw this season. What's up, Callum? How many will he throw? 14. 14 interceptions. How's that? And everyone will freak out about it. I can't wait. I'm really excited. Cassandra says her vote is for Kraft in that uh, category of how did he get drafted so late. It's a possibility, definitely. I think some of it's going to come down to usage and how much you know he's on the field, how much two tight end stuff we see. Um, and then also just the transition from college to the pros at tight end in general is, is tough. It's really difficult. So, I mean, I'm obviously pulling for him. I don't expect he – will, you know, be leading, like, wh whatever highlight package you watch uh, each and every week and, and garnering national attention the way Aaron Jones did early in his career when everyone was, like, asking Mike McCarthy why he didn't use him more, blah, blah, blah. I think it'll be, you know, I don't want to say tough going because who knows, you know, but tight end is a really tough, tough position to come in and, like, make a splash right away. I mean, just look around the league. It is very rare that rookie tight ends are, are kind of big news their first year in the in the NFL. But we'll see. 
Anything is possible. Brandy, nags, the D-line directly affects Campbell and Walker. Can Barry fix the crap this year? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like you can only hope. I do think some of it comes down to Jerry Montgomery, though. You know, how many times can you watch Dean Lowry on the ground, down after down, and not play Devontae Wyatt, not get T.J. Slayton in the mix more? I mean, at some point, it's about the rotation, and it's about the D-line coach having trust in the young players to do their jobs. Um, hopefully for the betterment of the defense. And now, of course, ultimately it's Barry's decision and or job to say, look, I want this kid to play more if he, you know, feels strongly about it. But yeah, I think that will go a long way. Having better play up front can only help everybody behind them. So here's hope. We'll see. Luke, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Just a high five super chat. Hope to meet up and have a brew this year. Thanks for carrying the G as always. Really appreciate you, Luke. Hope things are Going well there on the West Coast. Peter, thank you for the super chat. The pick of love on your title screen looks nice and natural, eh? To pivot, what's your favorite Star Wars spinoff show? Title screen. Title screen. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know what you mean. Well, because the title screen for this video is Devondre Campbell. I'm confused. To pivot, what's my favorite Star Wars spinoff show? Spinoff? Um, you mean like? Show, Star Wars sh television shows? Uh, it's definitely Andor. Like, I don't even think that's close. I love that show. Um, what else we got? Does Corey ever take off the Packers gloves? I need to know. Sideline report he did today. Uh, I have some pictures on my Twitter account. You can see of Corey uh, addressing uh, what was called the New North Summit. And it was a big business convention at Lambeau Field. Corey was speaking to like 600 people. Sans gloves. Shout out to Corey Banke. He's a legend. Uh, Chad says, Anthony Johnson Jr. is my vote for a late draftee star. He's got a shot. I totally agree in the sense that he could be playing a lot early on and hopefully making a name for himself. I know at the moment in off, you know, these OTAs that uh, it's been Ford and Savage there running with the ones at safety. But I think at least you know until the pads come on, you can't really say much of anything in regards to who's winning what jobs right and I think you start hitting you start getting physical and you start you know making plays yeah I think he could at least earn more playing time in some kind of dime capacity maybe even nickel we'll see I really like his upside and I do think yeah there's a possibility that you, you get halfway through this season and you're like this kid was drafted on late day three what I 100% agree there uh chuck it thanks again man what are your thoughts on buying jerseys? Are you a 15 or 92 jersey guy, or are you open to newer player jerseys? I'd never buy jerseys anymore. Um, the only jersey I currently own is the one the Packers sent me when they um, put together, put out the new um, throwback, not throwback, the classic jerseys. Um, when I did buy jerseys, I was always, I think the last, wow, is this true? Yeah, the last player jersey I bought Myself with my own money was Bubba Franks. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, no, I think after that, you know, I was very cognizant of free agency being such a powerful mover in the uh, jersey department. So uh, if I am to get a jersey now, I, uh, I got a great gift from uh, Bob in Milwaukee. Uh, was it two years ago, two summers ago? He got me a Horning jersey. You get, you can't go wrong if you get a, if you get a you know, an NFL legend, a Packers legend. Um, the next jersey I really want to get is a Bart Starr jersey. I need that in my life. But, um, yeah, you know, you get modern jerseys. Corey went through this for a number of years where he, I think he was cursed. He had a McKenzie jersey and oh, he had a couple other. It just he, like, three years in a row he bought jerseys and the dude left the next year. So it's always a dangerous proposition, man. Dangerous proposition. Uh, Porkmaster, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. And or I share my dreams of a good run D with ghosts. <laughs> that's outstanding. I burn my, what is it? Oh, that's such a good, that's the writing in that scene is so good. Um, can we or will we throw the ball over the middle more to tight ends and running backs? Matt, it's going to be tough not to. I mean, there. I know Rodgers fans get really sensitive when you talk about this, but the numbers, every heat map in the world will show you that, yes, Aaron Rodgers avoided the middle of the field. It's not that he never threw there. Of course he did on occasion, but for the most part, he very much tried to avoid it. And 
I don't think there's any doubt that we will see more balls over the middle from Jordan Love. But now, also, I think that's why you will probably see one or two few, you know, more interceptions because of it. Now, we may also get some big plays because of it, maybe some stuff down the seam, things of that nature. But, yeah, I, I just think the nature of having a different quarterback and a guy who is still trying to hone his game, I don't think there's any doubt we're going to see more passes and more concepts over the middle. Uh, I do not doubt that for a moment. Uh, with Crosby leaving, I'll officially be out of active roster player jerseys. Guess it'll just be rock and star all season long. There you go, Jim. There you go, Jim. Now you know what's up. That's the way to live your life, dude. I burn my life. That's it. That's what it is. I burn my life for a sunset I'll never see. I burn my, <laughs> I burn my life for a Super Bowl championship that I know is uh, questionable in 2023. How's that? All right, buddy. I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor. Hit like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And then tell your friends and tell your family, Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. (laughs) 